Hey now, it's Little Paulette without the gang, and I am back for the recap of Our Kind of People, Season 1, Episode 11. It's not light that we need, but fire. And while y'all are here, while I got you, go ahead and hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Now, let's get right into it. So it starts off with uh, Angela sitting in a room and Teddy walks in, looks like it's his house. And you know why she's there, because if you remember on my last video, Piggy had turned herself in, but she had told Angela how Teddy had been blackmailing her all these years about uh, Piggy shooting somebody and killing somebody. So Angela probably came there to be like, look, she told him about, you know, how you helped her cover it up and can you help her this time, get her out. You got Nate out with a phone call begging him to help Aunt Piggy. So he says some mess about they alike, they stubborn, they want to do what's best for their families, both of them. So he said he'll help Piggy, he'll put up money, a trust for Nikki, and he'll help her with any seed money. You know where this is going, right? Yeah, if you get the hell up out of here, I bet you that's what he going to say. Yeah, he offered her that so she can leave. And he straight up told her that he got things hidden that he don't want her to find out. I can't even go way back because shit make me want to cry. And Angela is definitely crying and she's definitely hurt because she was starting to love Teddy. While Angela said that she would consider the offer to help Piggy. You know, she was like, I know you want, her to go, you want me to go home, but I've been home. You know, I was looking for it in your family, but I've been home. Seeing at the place that her mother left her. And she said she would consider it, but she's so disappointed in him. She said she's considering it just to help Piggy. But she is definitely hurt. Teddy, man. Then it cuts to some loud music, and Angela is braiding wigs. You know, she braiding some hair for some wigs, and... Nate comes in there like, yo, where the party at? Because this shit is loud, girl. What's going on? And she drinking and, you know, she taking shots and she braiding hair. You know, she like, I'm determined. You know how Angela is. Like I've been telling y'all from day one. She is a hustler. She's a hustler, baby. Oh. <laughs> Nate said, it's 3 a.m. You know, you had to say it real loud because she had the music up all loud and shit. <laughs> She like, oh, it's 307. My bad. And just say, I couldn't sleep. Some people sh count sheep. I count braids. <laughs> Cute. So she tells Nate what happened when she went to go see Teddy. And Teddy and Nate is like, why would he want that? And she was like, good question. And then she was like, because he shook. And he is. He's so worried about Angela finding out what she what he did to her mother. But it's probably a lot more wrapped up into that. What happened with his brother? What happened with uh, Tyree's brother? You know, all of this shit is connected. So Nate told her that maybe she should take the offer because wanting, to re wanting revenge can destroy her. And it feels good now, but... You know, don't let it. It's not It's not like it's the worst offer in the world. He literally said he'd get Piggy out, put up a trust for Nikki, and give her all the money she needs to start the business that she needs. I don't know. I mean, what's so great about this place that you want to stay there with a whole bunch of people that don't like you? They think you ghetto. They don't want you to be a part of anything. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, they think they could take their little social club and dip, and I'm going to just dip? Nah. She hyped up. She's still taking shots. You know, real black girl shit. Then it cuts to uh, Raymond sitting at the table, maybe having breakfast. Um, a butler or a maid coming to bring him some food and paperwork or whatever. And Teddy sitting at the other end of the table. And Raymond starts teasing him about the paperwork, telling him that this is the paperwork that gives him his business back, gives him all his shares back from the white boy Jack since he died. They rightfully go straight back to uh, Raymond's family. And um, unless he would have sold them to Teddy before he died, but he didn't. So they go back to, to Raymond's family. They started going at it. <laughs> and Raymond said, <laughs> Raymond said, 
All you do is hide behind your money. You tried to pay your daughter off. And you hid your wife away to hide her illness. And he said, now look at you. Then he started shaking his hand the way that he do. The way his hand shake because he got Parkinson's. Woo! He said, but you call me weak. Yeah, I had to go back for that one, y'all. Way back. That's a good one, though. Teddy said, you may own Jack's shares, but I own the company. Raymond said, but now. Mm -hmm. And they had the paperwork. Then it cuts to Miss Leah and Jack, I mean Jack. Mm -mm -mm. Raymond asked her why she didn't make breakfast or you didn't make breakfast or something like that. I guess she was supposed to make breakfast. He ended up down there with Teddy because Teddy ain't want to be down there with him either. She said she was thinking. She must have forgot or something. And Raymond said, what you still thinking about what you did to Angela? And she was like, yes. Oh, Leah, Leah, Leah. So she gonna say you could say it a little softer. And he was like, nah, uh-uh. Basically, I ain't gonna tell you what he said word for word, but basically he said some shit like, you did this shit, you deserve it, you need to clean it up, or whatever. And uh, she was like, oh, you know, he, I know you don't believe this, but he really is just trying to protect me and my mother. And he was like, uh-uh. The only person Teddy Franklin protects is himself. She's so silly, and she knows deep down that he's not. She knows it. Raymond basically called her his her dad's lapdog. And she was like, wow, this has been an like, enlightening conversation or whatever. And he was like, well, how about this? How about you quit your father's company and you come and work at my company, which is the one the father says he owns, you know, he has, that he just got the shares back from. He said, run Darwin and we can run it together full-time equal partners and she was like wow babe like her eyes got a little big like woo but you know she ain't going nowhere no she ain't she talking about that's not an option he said it will be when i get the company back see what i tell you then it cuts to miss nikki on the bed look like she doing some homework and talking to miss taylor on the phone telling miss taylor that she misses her face and you know, shit been going down with her aunt and, you know, she really needs somebody to talk to, chill with. You know, basically she missed her girlfriend. She said something about going to meet for some ices later. Told her, told Taylor she loved her and Taylor was like, oh, babe, I gotta go or something. I'll talk to you later. Something to that effect. Basically, you know why. Because she cheating on her. So then she walks in the room and she in with her cousin. Uh, Lauren and Lauren gonna say oh, wow that was awkward and she was like awkward for you I'm cheating on my girlfriend and she in there like they at home and shit you know dressed in a t-shirt and boxes wanna grab her head and bam it in the floor for the, uh, poor little Nikki poor baby so they start talking about the whole cheating fiasco or whatever and Taylor's like I gotta break up with her and then Lauren's like, no, why? We don't do that. You know, like you said earlier, emotions are running high. You know, like, don't make no rash decisions. And I'm thinking, what, well, Lauren, you don't really want to? You just want to do it to her? <laughs> player, player, Lauren. Taylor's going to say, you and I have a bond. You and I fit together. And when you're in my arms, it feels perfect. And I don't want nobody else. Wow, just like that, she just done with Nikki. I feel so bad for Nikki. So, uh, mm. Lauren jumps up, kisses her on the cheek, and says that she can't say she, she can't believe she actually saying this, but she actually cares about Nikki's feelings, and they're actually in a good place as cousins, and all this shit. Why she cheating on her with her girlfriend? But anyway, she said took her hand it was like all I'm asking for is a little more time you know before we tell her or whatever poor Nikki it ain't a terrible to be cheated on and you the last one to know and everybody know and they're having discussions about it and all this shit and you don't know about it <sighs> damn Nikki make all these faces like she don't want to do it and then Lauren is like what is going on I thought this is what you wanted you told me to be nice to the girl I've been being nice now what is it? And she's like, fine. Like, seriously, Taylor? Girl. 
I wish I was in high school and I was y'all friends and I was on the show. I swear to God, me and Nikki, me and Nikki are jumpy. <laughs> but you know what? Nikki don't need no help. <laughs> she beat you up. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. It's just a TV show. But if it was my friends, I know how that feel. Like, you know, like I just want to put on a cat suit and me and my friends just go like mess up your car, your house. That's what we used to do when we was younger. Like we... We'll get you. We'll get you. Don't cheat on my friends. We'll get you. Nikki said being nice is making her feel bad. Girl, please. You've been cheating. That's what's making you feel bad. Mm -mm. All you got to do is stop messing with Lauren until y'all break up. And then when you break up, you are free to be with whoever you like, even though it's nasty that you was even with Nikki to begin with after you was with Lauren because Lauren was your first okay the fact that you're going back and forth between cousins mm, it's kind of nasty yeah it's just a little bit nasty just a smidge yeah Ugh. and it cuts back to Angela sitting in front of the mirror she's having flashbacks about her mom in the kitchen and mom telling her stuff about having big dreams and crying and Angela hugging her, you know, like maybe she's about nine, she looks maybe, and telling mama don't cry, you know, and Angela's just sitting there thinking, and you know, it's pretty sad. Then the door opens, and Angela turns to the side and huffs and puffs, and you see that it's Leah. <laughs> she got nerve. It is the all audacity for me what you did to her last episode and not just last episode like your husband said what you've been doing to her the whole time sabotaging her and blocking her every step of the way mm. you pretty much ain't shit Leah and you know I was always saying in these beginning episodes that you was just like your daddy but you was coming around and then sometimes you do come around but it's like I, I guess it's hard because you've been like your daddy for so long for you not to be like him but girl some of the stuff you do is just cruel when you know how your father is you know she told me I want to explain why I voted you out of the gray cities and so said I know why your daddy made you do it and Leah got this look of frustration on her face Girl, she telling the truth? What you frustrated for? Because she know? Please. Then she going to try to say your agenda was going to end up hurting my mother. Girl, your mother is a victim too. <laughs> your husband just got finished telling you that. <sighs> As I said, my mother is dead, Okay. And it took everything in me to scatter the, her ashes in a place that broke her heart. Okay? Your mother's in a mental institution. She don't know what be going on 90% of the time. She's not even around. So who gonna come up there and tell her? Nobody goes to see her but you and Angela and Teddy. So who gonna go up there and tell her if some stuff come out? Girl, stop it, Leah. Stop. And what the hell is up with this blinking eye shit going on with this avatar? I'm over here looking like Teddy. Let me stop. Angela said, I get it now. She said, your mother's alive and well. And you should be thankful. But I get it now. No matter how hard I push to get through, I ain't going to be able to get through because you going to block me. She says, stop pretending that you care about me, that the sisterhood is real. She's like, go, tell your father we have a deal. Mm -hmm. But you know Leah don't know nothing about this deal, right? Because that's the kind of shit Teddy does. Sneaky ass. And she definitely looked flabbergasted. And Angela said, oh, what, you going to act like you didn't know? She said, I didn't. And Angela said, well, you know now. Go tell him. <laughs> and Angela said as for you and me I don't see a reason for us to see each other again hmm. 
I am not mad at you. Yeah, it took Leah a minute. She kept stopping like she was waiting for Angela to stop her. And then she turned around and left. Get your ass on out of here, girl, with your backstabbing self. You done backstabbed I don't know how many times. And you know it. More times than she even knows. We know about it more than her. All the times you did stuff to her. Girl, please. I know you do care about her and you love her. But, of course, you love your father more. You've known him longer. You have a tighter bond with him. But you also know he ain't shit by knowing all that. But you continue to do his bidding. And I don't like that laptop bootlicker bullshit. Stop it. Next day show, Angela on the police. On the phone with the police. On the police. On the phone with the police. I talk so damn fast sometimes. And uh, she's asking about Aunt Piggy. And they don't know who she is or whatever. And Nikki's like, maybe we should just go down there. You hear the door open. And of course, Aunt Piggy comes walking in the door. <gasps> <laughs> of course they run and hug Aunt Piggy to ask her if she okay she said she just tired Nikki said I guess you can't say Teddy doesn't hold up his end of the bargain and then Aunt Piggy said what's that supposed to mean and then Angela said I asked Teddy to pull some strings Aunt Piggy said Teddy didn't pull crap he ain't do shit y'all Aunt Piggy is not home because of Teddy Chewing that. Cops, I believe, they don't really believe her. They let her go pending an investigation because she walked in on the street confessing to a murder from 30 years ago. No witnesses and I guess no evidence. They're going to investigate or whatever. Child, wait till y'all see what they find. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen because I'm going to tell you to go get a drink. Make sure you got your drink. And if you smoke, make sure you got your bliggy ready. Okay? Aunt Piggy said, till they find Darius' body, they're not going to really do nothing. So she said she prayed on it. This is what she was supposed to do. She confessed. Whatever they do or don't do, that's it. Like, she done with it. And uh, she asked Angela about what was this agreement that you made. And she told her, you know, the details or whatever. Aunt Piggy said, uh-uh, you're not giving up clearing your mama's name to protect me. I will serve my time. You gonna find out what happened to your mama. That's my sister. Nikki started crying. Piggy said, no, we need to enjoy the time we got together. Ain't nothing to cry about but taxes. So we, I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna throw myself a grand barbecue. She gonna have a nice, you know, black people barbecue, y'all. You know how we do. Like one of them. She want to do it today. Call it a farewell. So she going to have a barbecue with all her old friends and family or whatever. Because she thinks she going away to prison. And, you know, Nikki still looks sad. But Angela looks sad. But she's like, you know, us foreign women, we know how to throw a party. So she's trying to brighten up. Because what they're going to do, you can't stop her from turning herself in. Then it cuts to Leah's mom. She's at the house with them. And she's looking at a video from the cotillion. With Lauren and uh, Quentin. And I think Le yeah, Leah's there. And um, she's impressed because, you know, they changed the rules and they did a little hip-hop dance and all that stuff. And she's like, oh, my God, that's you upside down to Quentin. And she's loving it because she's looking at her grandbaby. She looks so pretty. She, they, she's a very pretty lady, the lady that they have uh, playing Leah's mother. She is gorgeous, a gorgeous older woman. Next thing you know, you see Teddy standing there, come walking up and standing there just looking. He don't look happy at all to see his wife. And then Leah turns around and is like, Daddy, why don't you come say hi to your wife and give your wife a hug or something like that. And then he puts on a fake smile and they're like, hi, Grandpa. And he come walking down the steps, but he did not look happy to see his wife there. He hugs his wife and she says she thought she'd come home to help Leah for the grand elimination week because you know how special that is for her and he was like mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah you see how fake my smile was yeah that's how he was doing it y'all next thing you know he's like leah can i see you she's like yeah so they move over and in the same room of course to a little bit over more than they usually do on other tv shows though y'all you know other tv shows they be right there acting like the other people can't hear them 
But um, yeah, they went over and he's like, what is your mother doing here? And she was like, she called. And she wanted to be part of the grand, uh, you know, elimination festivities. Her doctor signed off and she's taking her meds. So everything will be all right. She said, look at her. She hasn't been this lucid or energetic in a long time. Look at her. She does look good, y'all. And he says, you didn't consult with me. And she said, you didn't consult with me before you gave Angela that uh, ultimatum. Ooh. It's like I said earlier, he should have said something to her. You know, this is a foreshadowing, right? This is a foreshadowing of something to come. Because my next episode is the last episode. So this is a foreshadowing foreshadowing of something that's going to happen in the season finale. Now, I know that some people that watch my videos, they already seen this. But it's still funny. You need to hear me recap it. Leah said, when you uh, made me not you know, accept her unto the grace of these, you destroy any chance of us being real sisters. He gonna say, we all gotta make sacrifices. And uh, she said, and what are you sacrificing? And he was like, a daughter. Negro, you don't care. You already sacrificed Angela when she was born. You know, my nerves. No. He, he, is he worse than Martel Hotel Hope? Yeah. He worse than Martel Hotel Hope. But in a way, he's not because he ain't trying to sue nobody for child support, trying to get custody of kids just to get child support because he got his own money. But that's another show, y'all. I digress. She said her mother can stay there as long as she want. And she said ruining my relationship with Angela is worth something. Shouldn't it be, Daddy? Like, basically, you ruined my relationship with Angela, so you're going to let me have this with my mom there. But y'all know Teddy. He can't do that. He can't just let you win. He fights dirty. So yeah, he definitely worse than Martel. Martel ain't. Ah, I just wait and let y'all see. Then it cuts to um. Raymond and Tyree at lunch bragging about, you know, how they got Teddy with the shares and everything. And Tyree tells him that, <clears throat> mm, losing my voice, now he's going to be able to get into those books because they're giving him a password and stuff, you know, because of the project that he's working on. Yeah, y'all. Oh, that tongue thing. Look like a lizard. They working on something together. That wasn't me because if I do the tongue, that's all it does. Um, so, yeah, they working on something. They working good together. So, like I said, next episode is the finale. So, let's see what happens. Will they get the company back? Will Teddy find out? Will Tyree double-cross Raymond? Tune in. Same bat time. Same bat channel. No, let me stop. Raymond said he can get his company back and his wife. He say it's scary how he has her played. But I'm going to show her who he really is. <laughs> what? Yes, he did, y'all. Or as Smokey Mother said, ha, 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 I guess he did. <laughs> So Remy said, don't you and uh, Angela got something going on? And uh, Tyree said, yeah, I might have messed that up. And now she got her baby father hanging around. And then Remy said, wait, wait, wait. You mean her baby father that lives with her? That's more than hanging around. <laughs> Started laughing. He was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Wow. <clears throat> Tyree said he hate to take down a brother that just got home, but he got to win the battle. Like... So that means he gonna do something to Nate to make him go back to jail, which is crazy because Nate and Angela are not even together or even thinking about being together. He don't even have to do that. Shit is stupid. I hope that you get him a good job somewhere. 
that's the way you take him down by getting him a good job somewhere so then he can help Angela with Nikki and help Nikki be able to go to private school. Like, that's the way you get him out the way. Let him work on your project or find somebody in the same business as you that works in another state and ask them to keep him on. Like, no matter what, keep this man. I, want, I need him to work for you. That's how you do it. Don't do nothing wrong because Nikki need her father. You know her father. And I didn't see you doing nothing with Nikki. You was only participating with Angela. You wasn't participating in Nikki's life. Don't do that to her. Damn, what is wrong? We can't all, they, y'all all can't be dusties. Come on now. Y'all can't be dusties. Because it's like, even when y'all got money, some of y'all are still dusties. Mm -mm -mm. Then it cuts to Quentin and Sloan making out. Look like they're in the back on the deck or something making out. And he tells her she ain't like these other girls. And he, she like, mm-hmm, lips to the side like, Ninja, please. I'm supposed to believe that. He's like, you're not. And he's on the truth. She's not like them other girls. He's like, I don't know why I mess with them bougie princess, princesses. <laughs> Laura comes and interrupts them, sits down, and goes, <clears throat> and then just starts talking about reading some, I guess, a post on her phone about somebody's bag. Something was stolen from their bag, and did she, you know, did she take it or did she see it or something? And Sloan was like, so the maid's granddaughter took it. Like Lauren is a trip. She is one of the reasons why her brother don't like them girls around there. Trust me. Because they like her. Probably worse. And uh, Sloan called her basic. And she was like. Uh, called Sloan a gold digger. And then she was. Uh, Sloan jumped up. And then she tried to like jump in front of her. And was like. I have been watching her for a week. And she has been on you. And then Quentin was like. So what? Like that's what you do when you like somebody. Oh. Ooh, she don't like her just because she's the maid's granddaughter. For real, for real. Then she asked Sloan, was her summer job her brother? Is this your summer job, Sloan, my brother? For real? Sloan, you should have punched her in her eye. But see, yeah, you'll get in trouble. Oh, man. Grandmother might get fired, too. And her grandmother's a house manager. So it's not really much she can do. Poor Sloan. Sloan says, you should be more like your friend Taylor. She's nice. And by the way, tell her I love those kicks that she's been rocking. And does Nikki know? Oh, honey. She, them eyes started fluttering. Yeah, uh, Lauren got scared. Like, yeah, somebody knows. Right, because she is the maid's granddaughter. She is there every day. She see who coming in and out. She said, have you been spying on us? Sloan said, I was upstairs cleaning the hallway and you didn't notice me. You walked right past me. Of course, the, the maid is invisible. I'm not spying on you. She said, Q doesn't know your business, but I suggest you stay out of mind. She whispered it to her. And Lauren turned around and walked her ass away. Hmm. Get in that ass, Sloan. That's what I'm talking about. Alright guys, so I am going to stop this video right here. And I'm going to have a part two coming soon to a theater near you on YouTube. Alright, thanks for watching y'all. Sorry, I'm a little goofy. And guess what, y'all? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Hey, hey. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Go show it. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. Sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give up because it's your birthday. August 9th, baby. Thanks for watching, y'all. Love you.